Welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Join us every Wednesday to learn about the latest cutting edge developments in the real time communications industry. ClueCon Weekly is brought to you by FreeSwitch Solutions. Get support and professional services directly from the creators of the FreeSwitch open source project, solving your issues in the most efficient, stable, and scalable way possible. Get the FreeSwitch advantage. Visit freeswitch.com. Also brought to you by ClueCon, the premier technology conference for developers by developers. Join us every summer in Chicago. ClueCon kicks off on Monday with our annual hackathon, The Coder Games, followed by three days of technology-rich presentations discussing telecom, WebRTC, and IoT from developers around the world. To learn more, visit ClueCon.com or call 877-74-A-CLUE. And welcome to ClueCon Weekly, everybody. This week, um, our special guest is Liviu from the OpenShift Project. If you guys don't know Liviu, he's been around uh, Open Source VoIP and uh, OpenShift for quite a while. Um, he's a super great guy. I got to hang out with him in Chicago last August and learn some cool stuff about OpenShift. And he's going to be showing us more about that today. Uh, before we get to that, let's go over to Miss Kathleen King for the news. How are you doing, Kathleen? I'm doing pretty well, Ken. Thank you. Uh, hello, and thank you for joining us today, ClueCon Weekly, with our guest, Liviu, uh, from the OpenSips team. If you have any questions during the call, please comment in the YouTube, HipChat, or IRC channels, and we'll try to answer them during the call. Don't miss next week. We've got Dan Jenkins, who's the coordinator and main sponsor of ComCon. Mike Jarris from our team will be speaking at ComCon in June. ComCon is in the UK. And you can see what he has to say uh, uh, in June. FreeSwitch is also going to be at the OpenSIP Summit. We're very excited. The FreeSwitch team will be offering a training at OpenSIP Summit in Amsterdam this year. So don't miss that. And don't miss these both of these great chances to meet the, Kluk, or meet the FreeSwitch and ClueCon team uh, on the other side of the pond. Don't forget to save the date. ClueCon will be earlier this year, taking place from July 23rd to July 26th, and you can register right now at ClueCon.com. Take advantage of our February deal by registering before the end of February. If you use the discount code CC2018, save great, uh, you get $500 off your registration. So don't miss that. You have until the end of February, which is coming up pretty fast. Speakers, speaking of deadlines, signups are open and they close April 1st. So get those slides written, get those slides submitted. We've already gotten a couple of really great talks in. Uh, save your spot, make sure you get in on the, uh, the schedule this year and uh, get that done. And if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, please email us at marketing at ClueCon.com. We'll continue to add instructional videos periodically. And we actually have a new free switch with Fred video. So go see that, don't miss out and make sure you subscribe. And be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to this channel, and sign up for our mailing list for these and even more fantastic news and announcements. Thanks, Ken. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Kathleen. So uh, this week we've got Leave You from OpenShift. So we're going to go over to uh, Mike Malbrutus and uh, get Leave You in here. Uh, Mike, how are you doing today, sir? Wonderful day, actually. Um... So we're very proud to have Levy on the call today, a uh, very close friend, and uh, he has some really cool stuff he's going to discuss, which is, you know, <laughs> really impressive. Um, off to you. Hey, Mike. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, this is actually my first ClueCon Weekly, and uh, I've had way too many coffees. Um, I have way too many speaker notes, and I've done exactly zero rehearsals of these of this uh, presentation. So, <laughs> hopefully, all will go smooth. And uh, to our viewers, uh, I would like to thank you for tuning in. And um, uh, we are going to talk about mostly uh, the latest developments from our side with, with regards to the open SIPs and free switch integration and uh, pretty much only that and I don't want to make any spoilers with regards to other features that we have planned up um, with regards to the content 
Um, I will try to, I mean, it will be a bit technical, but I will try to keep it on a level that uh, everyone can understand and follow along, possibly with or without knowing too much about either OpenSIPS or FreeSwitch. Um, and before I start, uh, let me please quickly uh, introduce myself. Um, uh, I pretty much uh, spend my working days on hacking either on OpenSIPS or the stuff that goes around it. Um, either if, whether if it's project related, uh, you know, all sorts of development, helping people, IRC mailing list, GitHub, whatnot, or going to conference and speak about OpenSIPS, or the other side, the, the business side of things where, uh, you know, someone has to, to also keep an eye on their, whatever uh, things that we are working on there, the products and whatnot. So, um, you can reach me out, leave you see on IRC or uh, leave you on Twitter. And let's jump right into what uh, this is the topic for today, which is the uh, the next level of the integration. And what did I want to say by this? Like, weren't we doing it already? Because if you might, uh, if you remember, well, last year we said the same thing. Hey, we're integrated with FreeSwitch. So let's. Uh, go a bit back and uh, as I like to call it the episode one, so how it all started uh, and let's look at the problem. So there was this need to perform accurate uh, load balancing when routing to your free switch pool of servers. And you can see in this picture that um, you have your two free switch boxes in the middle uh, one of them has 90 calls and the other one is fully loaded. And you have your two open source boxes that are pushing calls to them. Um, and the idea is that you want to just load balance, right? But look at the left side, open sips. His decision is incorrect. He's going to push the calls to the box that it sees is least loaded. It has 50 instead of 60. But that's an incorrect decision, as in reality, that box is already full. So um, we solved this last year by making the following tweak. Um, we now have FreeSwitch send feedback to these boxes so that they know the actual uh, truth behind the, behind the story. And Although it's a bit counterintuitive, the left-hand side open sips will send, will keep sending calls to the free switch with more calls uh, from his point of view, but that's still correct. So and uh, that right, sure. So let me let me just ask a quick question. Um, so so the dispatching module, I mean, based on the different algorithms, right. is actually will come out pretty fair. Right, and so if it was a round robin, it should be 50-50. Or if it was, you know, based on the request URI or the destination URI, it still should, you know, come out pretty fair. So what would be the scenario that would cause calls to be heavy on one end? Um, right, so you make an excellent point there with the, with the dispatching. And although the, we can even make a slight comment here that you'd have to have all the software that's balancing to those free, switches, free switches work in the exact same manner, right? They all have to be doing this round robin thing in order uh, for the dispatcher to uh, expectedly work correctly. Uh, but then with regards to your question, uh, how about this scenario? What if some calls are transcoded and some are not? How can you tell that? Right. Oh, that's a very good point. For example, so, right, you, you just blindly dispatch them, and in your head, okay, I'm doing the right thing. I'll have ten calls on each side, but guess what? What if you've just dispatched ten calls, which are going to be transcoded, versus ten calls which are going to go straight through? Right. That's a huge difference. Right, and not only that, but no, not all hardware is equal, too. Right. So let's say you have, right. you know. If it's not exactly right, the same right. spec, it, it would load up too. So this is this this is very important. 
Right, so this is um, where all the, the discussion started with regards to the integration and making this balancing because, let's face it, it was already good to begin with, right? But we just want to make it work flawlessly. So uh, here we are, here we were then. And let's take a look at where we are now. Um, basically, it kind of looks like this, where uh, whether you like it or not, you can control free switch uh, fully in the uh, starting with the 2.4 release. Um, and I'm going to go through exactly what I mean by this. We are going to look uh, into each feature in detail. The first uh, change that we made uh, was to give the open SIP script writer the power to subscribe to generic free switch ESL events, right? Uh, because up until now, if I go back a couple of slides here, there was just this hard-coded event that's um, the, the heartbeat event that we would, uh, again, subscribe in a hard-coded manner, and that was it. But now we made the, the driver a bit more powerful, and you can subscribe to any event that crosses your mind. Uh, in fact, this is, um, this is quite interesting in that it's forwards compatible with anything that the free switch devs might uh, add in there, right? So, yeah, I've uh, I've put foobar on the slide. So maybe it's not there today, but you know, we might have it in there tomorrow, and it will work. So, um, once you subscribe to an event, the free switch notifies OpenSIPs with uh, an an individual package for that event for each individual event with uh, through the ESL interface. Uh, kind of like you see in this slide, uh, the content is here uh, for the, the viewers who are not familiar, it's uh, the content is JSON encoded and uh, it resembles something beautiful like this. So, Apparently, right, it, it's, it may be a bit frightening, but, you know, it's not that bad because it's, it's readable, it's uh, well-structured, and you can get a lot of useful data from it. For example, um, take a look at these useful fields that I've highlighted over there. The idle CPU, the max sessions, and the session count. Uh, in fact, that's all we need in order to do the uh, load balancing improvement I mentioned earlier, right? You know how many calls are on that box and you know how much CPU it is burning right now. Um, actually, so, it, yeah. So when, you, when you're talking about subscriptions and that type of stuff, um, it, this almost... Would, where would be the scenario where like middleware like message queues um, would take over? Uh, because there's been a lot of people have really jumped on you know the the message queue bandwagon. This kind of alleviates the need up to a certain extent to actually utilize middleware in order to you know enable to in in order to interact. Hmm. Well, I guess you use middleware if you really have to work or to operate at scale, right? Because uh, you can no longer do things in a synchronous manner and you'd rather decouple uh, the workflows, the, the, lo the workloads as much as you can. So uh, bringing this analogy into the ESL and OpenSIPS interaction kind of thing, hmm. I would say that for now, it scales pretty well. Um, you'd have to have quite a bit of free switches in order to what? To clog up an open SIPs and you'd have to use middleware in front of it? Uh, th that's what you're saying, right? Well, I, I was thinking more along the lines of there's like a one-to-one -one scenario here. But once you get into like, 
uh, the message queues, it's it's not. It could be multiple to one, right? So right. you would have like right. a bank of like 30, 50 free switches, and then you know it, it would go to AMPQ, AMQP. I always mix that up. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then from there, it would go to open steps. And so there's there, there's a point where this is this is awesome, and you can basically build anything very easily. Um, but that that message the message queue is probably where the application would be like multiple to multiple. Um, oh, basically. I get what you're saying. So you're saying that a single free switch, uh, we should prevent it from sending to too many open sipses that are in front of it, and rather add this middleware so there is only one pipe it pushes its events through, right? So right. I'm not sure if that's, yeah, I'm not sure if that's an issue or how well does free switch scale with, uh, because let's face it, how many open sipses do you even need? I mean, it's just signaling, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, right, so that's it's true. going to be what, exactly. 10, 10 open sips, 20, or, yeah, so. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. one open sips in like, you know, a couple of free switches. So the opposite. I'm, you don't need RabbitMQ for that. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So we, we cleared that up, right? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely understand. It. For now, right. Or And uh, for uh, the, the low-sized to medium-sized uh, scaling scenarios, just uh, you can go get away without using uh, the middleware. Just have them push straight to the open sipses. We're I'm going to talk uh, about the ways in which open sips reuses the SL connections, and uh, everything will really run nice and smoothly. So, uh, right. Going back, uh, we. Where were we with the events and uh, JSON notifications? And once they are triggered, we can these will hit the OpenSIP script, and we will be able to process them smoothly um, using the JSON variable. You can just parse them and um, uh, manipulate, you know, uh, all the information that you might need and act upon that either. Um, run some commands or uh, or whatnot. Also, uh, a tip that I might have here for uh, the OpenSIPS users: remember to set your uh, X logs buffer size. If you want to print out those JSON bodies, you will get uh, you will get logs full of errors that uh, the buffers are are uh, limit are hit because the ESL messages can get quite big. Some of them even go up to 10K or something like that, which is not common for OpenSIPS logging. Okay, uh, moving forward, the second major addition that we made uh, with regards to the extended integration are the ESL commands. And you can run these from the script, um, you can use them to initiate some call transfer on your free switch. You can use them to originate calls or any other ESL commands that most likely I'm not uh, familiar enough with. And um, you can do all of these with something like this. So you just specify uh, your parameters, um, I mean, your command and uh, you can use OpenSIP scripting variables to parameterize it and just run it. That's it. You can call this from any route. And, so right, you get an, uh, an instant response. So it is blocking, but I'm going to talk a bit about fine-tuning the, the ESL driver in a short bit. So just like... For, from a practical standpoint, let's say I wanted to pull an ACL. I could pull an ACL, and that would yep. greatly increase the security, you know, because you got, you're pulling it on multiple layers and checking on multiple layers. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds a good like a good application. Again, I I, I apologize for not being that familiar with free switch and uh, you know not seeing everything, uh, but uh, I'm I'm getting getting up there, you know, slowly. <laughs> right. Uh, so let's uh, let's look at. So basically, we're done with the the major, you know, the the spectacular part of the integration. That that's all. Uh, just events and commands, but let's look at how uh, things work in the back end of the open sips a bit uh, and in this diagram, we can see how all of these fit together so it's kind of a three layer sandwich where on the left hand side we have the free stitches that we want to communicate with, and on the right hand side we want the code that wants to fetch data from them. For example, your balancing modules uh, or the scripting code. And the, the thing that you know, intermediates this communication is the driver in the middle, the free switch driver. And uh, I'm going to go into quickly, let's quickly go to the lower level improvements that I, I've built into the driver and I'm especially happy to talk about. Um, so first off, it reuses ESL connections and their subscriptions. So when would this be useful? The, uh, let's say we have two or more modules that subscribe to the same ESL endpoint and uh, possibly subscribing for the same events. So if we go here, uh, you might have the script that uh, wants to get triggered whenever some DTMF or heartbeat arrives, but you also have the balancing module that is also triggered. So it will not. So the the whole setup will not will only open a single ESL connection. Um, so the second uh, cool thing to mention is that your reloads are smooth. So if you reload the, the list of free switches and uh, each of their subscriptions, you won't kill all the connections. Rather, the module will do some kind of, let's say, some, some sort of a diff and only kill the ones that really need to be killed and vice versa, open new ones and subscribe to them whenever needed. It will not attempt oversubscribe or things like that. And uh, the third cool thing is that it immediately reconnects and resubscribes to any connections that die. So for example, you restart your free switch, ESL connection dies. It's, it, it immediately is brought up uh, thanks to there is some sort of polling that we have into the open sips uh, uh, you know framework and uh, it allows us to detect immediately these kind of things and act upon them um, also um, there are uh, a couple of uh, things you can control with, uh, within the driver, some module parameters that are going to come in handy. Uh, for example, the expected interval of the free switch heartbeats. So um, this is uh, useful for uh, the load balancing modules to set up their timers. Uh, also, the blocking side of things, uh, the next two parameters, the connect timeout and the command, the timeout of the command itself. And uh, that pretty much concludes uh, the driver part. So we covered that. Let's cover the high level part, the free switch scripting module, the, the new kit on the block. And whatever you need to do either a free switch ESL from the script or catch that event route, uh, eFree switch event, you will have to load this module. Uh, otherwise, if you don't need this stuff, you can do the load balancing even without it, right? Because you just load up the driver and the dispatcher will work through it. No need for the scripting side. Um, also note uh, that 
it supports provisioning via database uh, and uh, the table kind of looks like this it's uh, pretty straightforward you got your sockets and a coma separate a list of whatever events you might want to subscribe to each socket just put them there hit the reload and uh, that's it and uh, speaking of reload here are the mi commands that come along with the the free scripting module you have so if you're not if you just want to do a quick test you won't even need a table you can just subscribe to a socket through the mi just uh, give it a shot subscribe and see see what happens you can list your current uh, esl subscriptions and uh, as i said before reload them so here's a let's do a wake-up call let's see who's really being paying attention why why is there no need for a free switch esl mi command what do you what do you guys think i honestly i i think a great it, it'd be great for debugging right let's say let's say right. you're looking you can subscribe to a specific call destination or source number and just watch them as they come through okay but why didn't i make it or maybe i was wrong <laughs> i will give you my arguments shortly but can you can you try to read my mind why i didn't put it in there uh, I don't know. we're supposed to figure it out <laughs> all right so i'm going to give you i don't know 10 more seconds wait, wait before be, 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 before i i'm just going to read some of the some of the comments in the chat i'm looking for hacking security and ransom <laughs> <laughs> Ransom, right. So what went on in my head, at least, was that you just use the free switch CLI if you want to do that. I mean, I don't know. A am I wrong or why would you? I mean, well, so yeah. here's the interesting part. And this kind of ties back to my old question is, so if you've got a bank of free switches, you would have to use a CLI on each individual interface, right? Uh -huh. But here, you, we have we have an aggregation of all the CLIs, and so you can subscribe to a specific event just like you would with a message queue, and then see it across all the subscribed infrastructure as long as that subscription is in place. Huh. Well, it kind of doesn't work that way currently. It's more of a per individual um, socket kind of MI subscription command. So you. Subscribe to this socket, to DTMF, this socket, to Heartbeat, whatever. It's not that uh, linearized for all of them under one event. Hmm. But if you want that, uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it kind of seems like you would need a database for that, right? So you just uh, vertically update whatever event you want to subscribe to and then hit reload, right? That's a way of achieving what you want. So Bogdan just said, single point of work, smiley face. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm following along there. And then we have another one. Uh, it'd be yeah, nice to manage the whole setup via XML RPC from OpenSips. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that would be a very, simple, a very simple thing to do. It's just tying the two together, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Maybe we could define each FSCLI and then use FSCLI FS A, A, B, and C. C. Right? Well, we can do that, actually. We can, that we can we, you, as part of the command, there's an option to actually set the IP. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I like the, the JSON RPC better. But anyway, Ahmed uh, is making a good point that uh, it's nice to, to manage uh, in that way. Right. Anyway, so if if uh, if there's a need for it to work like that, we can definitely add upon it. But uh, yeah, try to refute my idea. Like, why wouldn't you just uh, you know do an update in your like an SQL update, and then hit reload? 
Ah, because sounds straightforward enough to me. Okay, so uh, let's move forward because I'm not sure if uh, I'm going to f how well I'm going to fit into time here. Uh, We've got for this, for this technology, we got all the time in the world. Uh, okay, so let's see if th there is any more discussions popping up. Yeah, it's on the roadmap. Okay. So what would be like a practical use? So let's say I was going to build like uh, like a class five feature, a feature set, you know, completely from from scratch uh, using open sips and free switch. I mean, this, this would really enable um, a really more efficient way than most people are doing it now. Right. Uh, I mean, right. Uh, definitely keep in mind that this uh, doesn't necessarily, it just makes it easier to build things in one place. So maybe it's easier to manage your uh, your free switch configuration or the, the whole, like, like you said, the whole class five service uh, along with everything that goes in front of it from one single point. That, that's the idea. It It might make it easier because again, Maybe some people are so hooked up into, you know, free switch and XML configuration and whatnot that uh, they're like, okay, but I can do these these things in a second right now. Okay, so it's always uh, the, the truth is in the middle. Some a feature might work with some users and uh, it might not work with others. So what do you what do you, what do you envision to be like the typical use case for for this connector? Um, the the typical use case uh, is from what I've uh, learned up until now is the DTMF. Yeah. I guess it's it makes it a lot easier to to build authentication on the OpenSIP side and. Uh, going from there, uh, you know, to decide upon that. We're actually going to do right that, uh, just that in the demo. This is uh, from one side, uh, and uh, from another side, uh, you can also do uh, all kind of uh, tricks uh, uh, in uh, in a way that uh, you use uh, OpenCPS uh, um, to command uh, uh, free switch uh, in a way that uh, you have not uh, written into the dial plan, into free switch dial plan, but uh, uh, you tell free switch what to do uh, when you send him a call and uh, and then um, you have, uh, uh, if you have in the beginning the UUID, then you can control that call uh, through the uh, ESL. And in that way, uh, you um, let's say uh, you can have uh, uh, a very uh, light uh, uh, way to have uh, a, a very uh, big SIP uh, uh, switch uh, with on the back uh, uh, media services. Right, and it, and so like I, I'm just just something that I, that I would throw off the top of my head is you can basically you know, uh, basically re initiate a re-invite um, through UUID transfer, you know, stuff like that. I mean, there's some really cool stuff that could be, that, that could be performed. Or even like, I guess it would be like a refer too. You could do a refer, you could do a re-invite. There's so many like really interesting things that you can do once you get down to, the, to those core commands. But you're, but you, but you're essentially performing them on a on a layer that is a layer before. Like from a from a practical aspect, let's say like you know um, something like we start seeing packet loss, right? An RT, RTP engine or like RTP proxy starts starts showing packet loss. 
Well, then if you're if you have a subscription for the calls, you can do a UUID transfer and and, and move the colo location on the fly. And that's something that's really easily achieved with something like this. Yes, uh, and uh, particularly, uh, for example, uh, you can use a couple of tricks. Uh, so from one side, uh, you can use, uh, uh, you can create a new UUID and then uh, originate a call from FreeSwitch giving uh, uh, that uh, UUID as a, as a UUID, uh, so you can then uh, control from uh, OpenCPS. But uh, uh, on the other uh, side, you can also uh, do the opposite and, for example, uh, put always put uh, the UUID of the call uh, into an, uh, a SIPX header. Uh, so you can control uh, in any case from uh, uh, OpenCPS. So, for example, uh, you can uh, uh, kill the call or take control of that call. Also, if that call was not originated by uh, OpenCPS, uh, the trick is uh, uh, to make explicit uh, the connection between the call ID and uh, uh, the UUID in FreeSwitch. And uh, uh, if you export this uh, through, uh, for example, a uh, CPEX header, uh, you have uh, complete uh, transparency and uh, you can control the call both from FreeSwitch and from OpenCPS. I mean. Right. But I, I mean, also, you, you can get that information. You don't even have to exchange them. The X headers, at least in my understanding, is you could just you could just subscribe to them, essentially, right? Yep. You, all the call state, all the updates, uh, they flow into OpenSIPs. So, right. I mean, that's a, this 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 is awesome stuff. This is this is for me at least just for me personally. This is ultra exciting stuff. <laughs> like I can't wait to start playing with it. <laughs> Break some yeah. things. <laughs> speaking, yeah. Speaking of playing with it, uh, is everyone ready for the demo? Shall we? Do we postpone it or? No, let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Let's see. But, but let's let's not make it a dangerous demo. Let's hope that it actually doesn't um, crash. It. Not too much. Right. So. <laughs> um, this is. Uh, how we all in all this is how we use it uh, before i continue let's see if the uh, let's follow with the chat questions and uh, finish those up uh, auto dialers ahmed is saying that there, there are no command. questions i'm just uh, entertaining the guys on uh, on the chat so just just go with the demo okay okay release, release the stress and the tension we want to see the demo Okay, um, so if you if we take a look here, this is all you need to get this working. You load the new module, the free switch scripting, and you can uh, you may define such a free switch endpoint to subscribe to. Uh, again, you you can do this via MI if you want, and that's it. You just write start writing your event routes, and in the first demo. And uh, excuse me for not having a better, better preparation than this. I'm actually going to unplug my second monitor for a bit and uh, switch to screen share. One second. Screen share. Okay, don't use it. It should it should be up now. The the screen share. Not sure who okay. So um Let's take a look at the setup. Oh my God! Wait, can you maximize the terminal? Yes, I, I definitely can. Let me take a 
quick look. All right, so let me get things ready and I will start explaining what's going on in here. In just one second. Okay, so we've got an open SIBS and a free switch running. Um, let's take a quick look at the script that open SIBS is running on. It's this um, DTMF simple script and all that it's doing I'm going to quickly show you it just just like we talked in the previous slide we connect we, I mean we subscribe to the free switch for any DTMF channel state or channel answer events and we will be uh, logging them Great, and, and also, and just a note them. for all right. the visitors, all the viewers out there, don't use default passwords. Do I use it? Oh, right. Yeah, I noticed you guys uh, made a, like a 10 second sleep as a default. That, that, was pretty, that was so annoying, I had to learn about not using password in order to get rid of it. <laughs> so I like that. <laughs> okay, um, so next, and, and that's the open SIPs. We, we start off it. And I'm going to subscribe two, uh, two SIP endpoints to the free switch. But before I do that, uh, let me explain how the setup uh, actually works. So all the SIP is just going into free switch. There will be no SIP into open SIPs, as fun as that sounds. So. Let's listen for SIP on the open SIPs box and uh, start enabling these two guys. The endpoint th 1000. Who am I kidding? At? All right. Oh, ne never mind. I, I did the setup on the other box and um, I was used to it working it differently. But of course, we see SIP because the blink is here. Never mind. Um, but anyway, uh, these two guys are registering to to free switch, and we are going to grep for the so-called. Let's find a logging line that is useful uh, for the DTMF. We might even log it here. Say, it's, uh, and we are going to. Free switch event. Actually, we we have something here. It's it's this part. So we can tail the the log for this. So let's tail the log and grab something like free switch event DTMF. And let's play around. Um, so unfortunately, Blink doesn't have a dial pad, or maybe I'm too much of an idiot to find it. So um, I'm using a lint phone to make this work. Uh, so this is extension 1002. And we're going to call 1000 from lint phone. And there, there's our call. And I'm going to open up the lint phone dial pad and type something. Whoop, event DTMF. That's how this thing works. Yeah, that uh, pretty much concludes our first demo. <laughs> and uh, the idea is that we will use this as a building block. And starting with these events for the second demo, um, we will initiate a call transfer to, to a second extension. Um, I actually looked a bit into what you suggested before the call with the, um, and for this we're going to use script number two, which is the DTMF transfer script. And I was saying I looked into what you said before the call, the um, the pizza kind of service. I did didn't, didn't, yeah, I didn't manage to get it working. Although I did manage to dial into the date, what are they called? Date announcement or whatnot. 
that one's working. So we're going to have fun with that as well. DTMF transfer config file. And uh, let me show you the, the switch that we have here. So the idea is that um, whenever, so should we start from the top route? Let's start from the top route. So whenever any event hits us with the e free switch, we can extract everything from it here. And we only act if it's a DTMF. Um, we also have to have the destination number because uh, in this example, uh, maybe, again, uh, if this is not clear, you might want to read the blog post for the full scenario. The idea is that we want to hit an initial IVR that directs us uh, into a support line based on the language we choose in this IVR. So for example, it'll say, you know, one for English, two for Spanish, whatnot. And you, we transfer to the associated extension. That's what this part uh, here does. We match it with a support, uh, support number and we hit up this route that we, we can nicely code it based on whatever input digit the user dialed. And uh, in this case, number one and two will hit up uh, some extensions that are registered here from Blink and either Blink or Linphone. And what I was saying, the fun ones are uh, three, four, and five. The talking clock, talking clock date. Anyway, you free switch guys um, might know a lot more tricks than I do. So this is all that I could cook up uh, up until now. And the pizza didn't work. So, right, we, we're going to have to work on that. Um, and we need, a much, we need a much healthier choice too. It should be like salad. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, that's about it. We do the transfer, and there are additional details here with the cache thing that ensures that we skip any other digits the user might dial, right? Because they might go something like this, and you don't want to initiate like tons of transfers or stuff like that. Uh, this this makes things bulletproof. The the guards here. All right, so let's see it. Let's see it. Let, let's see it. Let's start off on it. ETMF transfer. And we got our blink there. Did I close the call? Mm, what sh should we grab the logs for something? Let's also see some actions here. So free switch event, and I'm going to stop there. Maybe, oh, cool, the heartbeats. <laughs> Good thing that I set them to one second so they fill up the screen. Jesus. Um, okay. And let's dial into 1000. Maybe we can... Anyway, let's do it like this and we can make it more obvious afterwards. And we've set up the call. And now I want to... Anyway, th this usually uh, should have been an IVR, but follow along. And I'm going to hit one for the English transfer. We hit one, and immediately the call has been forwarded, or should I say transferred. We accept it, and that's it. And I'm going to scroll up through the log so we can discuss a bit what happened right there. Um, there's a, maybe, Anyway, this was the first part where we answered. And heartbeat, heartbeat. We typed here the, the event DTMF. We typed key one. And then there's some more state, state, state. And answer. Yeah, right, because we took a while. And it changed to ACK probably. And that was it. That's how we got events 
into. Oh, let me close this because. But wait, I didn't hear the. I didn't hear the time. But you can't hear it. I'm sharing audio from the microphone. I'm not sure if. How can I get oh. this working right? Whereas okay. that's audio from the other net device, right? Can I share them both on the Verto? Or how does that work? Um, <laughs> it, uh, you, you can't. Uh, it will be uh, yes, canceled. You can't. Yes. Mm -hmm. So only, <laughs> only most, I got to hear it. <laughs> so the, mo most, the most important fact is that. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I heard. Uh, I mean, uh, there wasn't anything to hear because uh, we chose the key one, right, with the um, the transfer to extension. But uh, we can we can try to transfer to the clock, and the call will close within three seconds. I guess that will be spectacular. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, we got that. And what was it? Three? That was the time, I think. Oh, call ended, and right now I can I can relate what I heard. It's twenty fifty six, <laughs> right? And that was it. Free switch closed the call. Well, it's all it's all really cool stuff. It really right, is. and it's very, very it it cool. all we did all this without any sip into open sips. So this is one of the few times that open sips works with no sip. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do we, we want to stay, start taking questions from the audience? Uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm done here with the demo. I'm uh, actually going to switch back to the slide view. And uh, right, any, if you have any questions, this is the good time to do it. Hello? Logan? Yes? How are you? Hey, uh, I'm fine. Hi. I, I just, uh, uh, while uh, Livio started, I just made a quick uh, run back home <laughs> to catch up with the, with the call. <laughs> and, uh, okay, hey, this, yeah. is all, this is all really cool stuff. I can't, I, I'm so excited for the OpenSIP Summit in May. Um, it, it's gonna. Be, I'm. I'm very much looking forward to it. And anyone could get Open Sips training and free switch training. You can have your choice. Can you do both? Is it the same time or just one? Uh, the they, they, they are overlapping. They are doing the same time. So you have yeah. to to make uh, you know the blue or the red pill. <laughs> Typical decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, in any in any case, you're jumping down the rabbit hole. So. I'm going to be teaching the class with Giovanni, and um, hopefully it'll turn out well. Um, really, really neat stuff. Uh, I believe the curriculum will be, or a synopsis of the curriculum is on the OpenSIPS website, right? Yes, Yeah, I have some slides here, but I'm having trouble getting them up. It's quite funny. Uh, let me put them up one second. Um, where is it? In the meanwhile, uh, keep yeah. in mind, uh, we don't have dangerous demos. We have uh, demos that uh, should work. Uh, during, uh, during the summit in the last day, we have a uh, full day of, uh, I wouldn't say demos, but you know, practical, practical examples on uh, what you can do uh, with the um, OpenSIPS uh, 2.4. And... Uh, more cool stuff about this integration uh, will be uh, presented uh, uh, with that uh, occasion. And we don't have to, uh, let's say, not forget about um, uh, uh, Giovanni's uh, contribution into that, because as I said on, uh, on the chat, uh, actually that was an, uh, the original idea and proof of concept in terms of basic coding uh, was uh, uh, Giovanni's work we then boiled and took over the idea while uh, discussing I, don't, I guess i'm not sure if you remember michael in uh, in houston during the during the open Sips boot camp we discussed about that and uh, uh, then um, 
if you get uh, involved and uh, rolled over uh, this concept uh, and uh, managed to make it more more uh, general and more configurable. But uh, this uh, cool idea of uh, being able to to couple to uh, the two softwares by the events and the ESL uh, started uh, as a as a great proof of concept from Giovanni. So we have to to give him like huge credits for that. Yeah, it, it yeah. is. It, it's really great. And so uh, you know, just because I'm a big security guy, uh, just coming right off the top, like I mean, just the fact that you can pull ACLs just like that. I mean, that that's awesome. I mean, that that you can essentially lock down systems so much easier and with so few code than you could in the past. There are so many things that you can do with this uh, right now because, uh, you know, there are like uh, two generic uh, uh, mechanisms that you have, uh, but at the end uh, you can get so many combinations, you know, uh, between in terms of, uh, you know, implementing different kinds of uh, scenarios. Right, yeah, sure. And I, I've got to say, down in Houston, I did well, I, I did learn quite a bit about uh, open sips there at the, at the boot camp. That was, you know, really valuable class, very valuable class. So probably, probably, I would, you know, should I take the chance in uh, uh, in Amsterdam during the summit to take the free switch training? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you guys need it. I, 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 I'm confident that you guys are very confident when it comes to free switch. <laughs> well. Um... How to say there is enough room for you know for improvement. <laughs> uh, on both sides, on both sides. So I mean, it's it's really great to work with you guys. Um, it really is. Uh, believe you managed to get the page up. Yes, it's up. It's uh, yeah. only a matter of Ken probably putting it up. Right. So. Uh, excuse me for the technical difficulties. I, I've had a little bit of trouble switching up monitors. So th this is the, the official uh, summit uh, announcement for uh, this year in May. There's uh, going to be four days of, uh, of the whole event. And in the last day, uh, there will be uh, two parallel train tracks taking place. One is the open SIPs. The other one is free switch. Uh, if you want to get a good grasp on uh, on solid practices of using these uh, projects. Uh, you might want to enroll yourself into one of these trainings and uh, get ready for, you know, like a good six, eight hours of, of, uh, of struggling because there will be a lot to learn there. And, um, and, and sorry to interrupt, it's worth being mentioned I, that actually this will be the first official certified free switch training in Europe or actually more said outside US. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, we, we actually did. We did the first round. We did, we, we did the first round this, uh, this past week at IT Expo. Um, yeah, and it, it, it went <laughs> exceptionally well. It went really, really well. And we had, a, we had a really big turnout. So one of the things, guys, is all the people listening out there, sign up quickly. <laughs> Where there's no more spots left, All right? And then, and then at the end, it's like it's almost like an Iron Man competition too. <laughs> Only the strong survive. <laughs> For sure. Okay, so all right. Well, back to you, Ken. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Leave you. Thank you. Uh, very much. It's great to have you in here. Bogdan, thanks for jumping in and joining us there for just a few minutes. And of course, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Michael Malbrutus, uh, aka Jersey Mike, for uh, you know having that great conversation there with uh, Leave You. And uh, thanks to all you guys for showing off the, the cool new stuff that's coming into OpenSips and how to integrate that with FreeSwitch. Uh, don't forget, guys, uh, if you want to find out what's going on uh, with the free switch team and uh, with Klucon, follow us uh, on Twitter uh, at Klucon and at uh, free switch. Like us on Facebook, uh, and you can find us there at facebook.com slash uh, free switch. Uh, you can also find Klucon there. And also, don't forget to uh, join us here next week 
Kathleen's got some cool stuff lined up for us, so be sure you come and join us and see us then. We'll see you guys back next week. Have a good one. You've been watching Klucon Weekly. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central. Keep up with the latest happenings by subscribing to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or visit us at freeswitch.com.